Just set it and forget it. Welcome back to Fatty's Hot Rods. I mean, Hopper's Fat Rods. I mean, Floppy's Rod Heads. It's been about 30 pounds since I saw anybody. And, uh, but we're back. We're working on the Mustang <coughs> today. <coughs> it's a short list of stuff to get this thing to where it could be a reliable daily driver. And that's what it should be. There's nothing wrong with it. The first thing I had to do was find the wireless microphone. And somebody a long time ago told me, if you can't find something, stop what you're doing and start cleaning and you'll find it. So that's exactly what I did. And it didn't work. All I did was end up cleaning up some stuff. But there's really no downside to that. Take 22. All right, let's get this thing fired up. Let's get everything else fired up, moved out of the way so we can get this thing on the lift. Cue the music. Well, it was going to be a time lapse of all the vehicles moving around because they're all ready to fire up and run on paper. I have to change tactics. So first thing you got to do is set the battery charger to sizzle. We'll see if it'll start up now. It won't. Gonna let that cook for a little while. I set the thing to sizzle. I, I tried cooking the battery for a while. It's an Optima battery. I don't know why it's not coming back to life, but I'm gonna put a different one in. So first we're gonna take this one out. I will add this to the time-lapse montaging. You'll like it. Oh, that goes up high. I gotta tell you, this is very embarrassing, but I'm gonna show you anyway. Look how crappy that twisted green thing. Hmm. I didn't connect everything. I think this is mainly for the stereo, but I didn't hear anything crackling. I don't hear anything. I don't smell anything burning. Fresh battery. Now, listen to her roar to life. Yeah. Yeah. Free in the thunder. Bring the, bring the lightning. something minor success it won't stay running but I have a theory that I know what that might be let's go have a look right here how do you break this thing in half here Can't see nothing. Hmm. I'm shaking the car. And I'm not seeing anything that looks like liquid in the gas tank. That might be the problem. What does it take to make a vehicle run? Well, you need a good battery and you need fuel. Turns out, <laughs> no fuel. And it had a bad battery. Battery's fixed, time to put in some fuel. But trying to wrestle a five gallon fuel jug uh, is going to make me look like, well, the weakling that I currently am. So uh, I got an idea. Wait here. Oh, 
Yeah. All right, there we go. Probably over here. So just grab a deep well socket. In this case, it is a 3 8 And, uh, you know, just jam the hose through it. And that way, <clears throat> it's important to use a deep well socket because you are approximating a deep well. See, it's like it's in a deep well, deep well socket. I don't know if this is gonna work. It's gonna work. So here's your fuel being picked up nicely by the socket. And it's feeding the very thirsty gas tank. Sure, that'll take a few minutes, but so what? What are you in a hurry? dead batteries, and flat tires. These tires are, there's the nail in that one. I can't believe it's holding this much wind. These tires are easily 12 years old, which doesn't bother me because they've been kept indoors. Tires that have been outside for 12 years start to get pretty crunchy. Tires that have been kept indoors are less, uh, well, crunchy. There's always stuff to move out of the way. please uh, yes we compared the black marks in the parking lot with the rear tires of the yellow Mustang and they are the same model and size tire Michelin model XGV size 75 R 14 inch wheel they're the same size and model tire anything else I took tire samples from the parking lot and the rear tires of the car and analyzed them. Uh, what kind of equipment did you use to uh, find this out? I used a Hewlett Packard 57A dual column gas chromatograph with flame analyzation detectors. The chemical composition between the two samples was found to be identical. Identical. Take 22. First thing we have to worry about with this Mustang is the uh, 
self-deflating tires. We'll get it up on the lift, we'll scan it, we'll make a list, we'll check it twice. <laughs> That's got it up on the lift. And the first thing you do, just in case you didn't know, is you raise the vehicle to the first safety stop. You'll hear a loud click. And then you can jiggle it, take a flashlight, and make sure that all your points are not in a precarious position. And then you're ready to, you know, lift it the rest of the way. Don't go dying on me. I disconnect the battery so that if it's on the lift for a month, it doesn't drain the battery. If I touch something, it doesn't. This thing is surprisingly rust free, which is uncommon for these vehicles. But I do see a few things. This was uh, assembled fast and loose. This is the lower radiator mount, just a piece of metal folded over with a rubber thing zip tied to it. But now, <clears throat> This looks like it was whacked and bent in some kind of uh, front end accident. And this is not attached properly, this lower metal piece. Not affecting anything, but it does vibrate. So we're going to try to straighten this out, move this bracket to where we can put another bolt in, at least get that out. And I don't know where these would bolt to. I felt around inside and I didn't feel anything. but. There's a couple of dimples here, like it used to have a, a bracket, maybe. So over here, you can see where this steering cross member has a little crack right here. I don't know if that you can even see that on the camera. There's a little crack right there. But it's welded here and welded here to the body. But if we follow to the other side, it is completely torn from the body and separate it here. Now, I know for a fact this thing has left the earth and impacted this pretty good, but that being torn away will offer overall steering instability because that's part of the uh, steering geometry. So that has to be repaired. It has to be closed up properly and uh, reattached, re-welded. Um, the oil pan has also taken some, some abuse. It's very concave. Um, and we have a little bit of an oil leak. Now I know this pan was changed out when this engine was put in the car. So we're going to go around and tighten all the bolts and see if that helps the leaking situation. But I think it is probably the rear main seal, which we'll just pretend we didn't see that. There is, in addition, an exhaust leak that I discovered right here. And the only reason, and it's not bad, but it needs to be repaired because the O2 sensor is right here. And if oxygen gets in here, it gives it a faulty reading. Um, the rest of the vehicle is not in bad shape. It doesn't appear to be twisted or mangled in any way. It's got a uh, nodular rear end. It's got the end right there. That means it's a nodular. Uh, it's got a little bit of a leak, but just barely seeping. We'll make sure that's all nice and tight. Clean it up. Check the levels back here. And we definitely need to swap out these tires, but we've got new tires. So that's it. Exhaust leak. Definitely need to figure out something about this cross member tighten up the oil pan, maybe the drain plug also, and uh, put some wheels and tires on this thing and she'll be ready to hit the road. Here's something you should do is write the date and mileage on your uh, oil filter. I didn't do that. Uh 
Well, here's one of the new tires. There are four, which is the traditional number for most of these vehicles. I don't know why I'm yelling. I've got the little microphone on. Let's compare the two. All right. So, the difference between the two is um, noticeable. Why would you go with a different tire? This tire is a 20570 R14. The new tires are 24560 R15. So it's a larger rim, but in addition to a larger rim, it is a slightly taller profile. And I'd say it's only about 5% taller, but it's about 20% wider. And uh, that's better for traction. Now, the advantages of going to a slightly taller tire are technically you could get better mileage because there are fewer revolutions per mile. This one, it's, you know, like 780 revolutions per mile. This one's more like 760. So it takes fewer turns to go a mile down the road, being that 5% larger. What would be a, a negative or a uh, whatever the opposite of a positive is of going with a slightly taller tire um, is that if you were finally calibrated with your instruments, the speedometer would be off. In this case, if you were going on the speedometer 100 miles an hour, you'd really be going 105 miles an hour, but your speedometer would read 100. It's only about 5% taller. So it's negligible if you don't make too big of a change and it's absolutely irrelevant when you have no speedometer whatsoever as we do on the Mustang. So these are the new tires, these are the new rims. They have lots of holes in them so they should fit uh, the bolt pattern. The offset is also more or less centered, meaning even though we're going with a wider tire, it should sit in the fender well correctly so it won't rub on anything. All this we'll find out for sure once we do a test drive, but that's what the Google machine said. So that's what we're going with. And uh, truthfully, it's not that big of a tire. People stick a lot larger tire, especially in the rear of these old Mustangs, and they don't have any clearance issues. So we should be all right. We're going with the same tire front and rear so that you can rotate tires. The owner of the Mustang plans to use it as a daily driver or at least a frequent driver. So being able to rotate the tires is nice. Um, we will eventually be attempting to affix these hubcaps to this, to this wheel. I have an idea how we can do that, but right now we, uh, we're just gonna run them with the, the black wheels there. So let's stick one up there and see how it looks. How much does the extra air weigh? I mean, darn it. Well, it looks great up there, doesn't it? Now, the uh, tire being 5% larger means that it's also a little taller. And it's just a little over half of an inch taller. Therefore, the center is only a quarter of an inch higher. So it'll give it a little bit more ground clearance. The car will ride a quarter of an inch higher than it did before. So if you really like the, your car height and profile, you may not want to mess with anything taller and you might just want to try to go a little wider. Anyway, let's see when these were made. There is pertinent information we can glean from one of these tires. And namely it's the, uh, 
The Department of Transportation mandates that there be a date code showing the manufacture date of every tire. And uh, <laughs> these are old. I'll uh, come closer. Come here. I'll, I'll, let, I'll show you what I'm talking about and where it is and how it works. Okay. If you're looking at an old car and you're looking at the tires and they look okay, but you're wondering how old they are, the DOT code that is followed by numbers is what you want to look at. And this number 2408 um, designates that the tire was made uh, in June of 2008. So this tire is like currently close to 16 years old, probably needs to be replaced. And you can see it's you know, rather crunchy. That's another thing to look for. Take 22. Here's the manufacture date on the new tires. And you can see they were made the 36th week of 2023, which is, of course, whatever that date is. Well, while you've got the car on the lift, the vehicle, while you have the vehicle on the lift and the um, wheels off, it's a good time to inspect the brake components. And we will also detail the, uh, you know, underside here. Oh, what a mess. I personally rebuilt these brakes a little while back, but I didn't paint the drums when I put them on there. And I want to make sure I lubricate the adjustment uh, wheel right here. They are self-adjusting, so when you drive backwards and bump the brakes, this little paddle clicks this little wheel and spreads the brake shoes out to the proper adjustment. Additionally, since we can't run hubcaps, I may stop at the uh, auto parts place and get a full set of 20 of these uh, chrome half inch by 20 thread lug nuts. So at least all the chrome lug nuts will be chrome lug nuts and it'll almost look like we intended it to look this way. Almost. It's an idea. What's your idea? You got a better idea? So let me see if I can magically change this really quickly. There we go. I think it looks $5 better. Three more to go. I got to tell you, to some mechanics, me being one of them, this whole uh, broken part of the frame business could be a cause of some alarm, could be the cause for some alarm. But personally, I'm absolutely thrilled that I found it because this thing did a, a weird shimmy when I test drove it last time, and uh, that's probably why. I'm just gonna try, as an idea, putting a clamp on this thing to see if it'll uh, move at all. If it does, that's, that means it's loose enough that uh, I should be able to repair it. Let's just see if we can get it to budge. Oh yeah, the whole thing just drew up, which means it's that loose, like very loose. I wonder if we should clamp it from the top just to test drive it for safety because that's the whole, you know, that's not a bad idea. Let's just see what else we got here. Let's see if we can get this clamp on it from the top it would be sticking up too far from the bottom but if we could get this clamp on it at least we could test drive it and check our tire clearances okay let's see if we can just reverse that get it up here like this Lower 
the car down. We'll pinch that as tight as we can get it so at least we can uh, test drive it with a little bit more safety. But that means we should be able to squeeze it, clamp it, bend it in place, and weld it back the way it's supposed to be. In theory, we may have to disassemble this steering component to get it to move the right amount, but we will see. I don't know about you, but I think it looks great with those wheels and tires on it. I mean, I think I like it a little bit better than the hubcaps. Yellow and black, it looks like a big DeWalt tool. Let's take it for a ride. Well, we made it to the local car wash, and man, this thing rides great. It looks good, it rides good. The tires look nice and meaty on there. It does pop a little because of that cracked frame, but uh, other than that, when you torque down your lug nuts, it's important that for every inch of extension on your torque wrench, you extrapolate the proper torsional flex and add one sixth of a percent per inch. I'm just kidding. Just torque them down to about uh, 100 foot pounds or so. You can't be too far off with that. video I gotta fix the frame I gotta fix uh, well the frame that's kind of an important one and then uh, we'll give this thing a proper test drive <laughs> that's it for this video thanks for watching we'll see you soon